Good morning. It's always a pleasure, as usual, to stand before the heavens and the congregation of Christ. <coughs> um, this thing that I'm pulling off my face predates the pandemic from my point of view. I've been working on a, a construction for about 23 years and no one else on the site would wear mask. So when they saw me, they say, why is this guy always wearing a mask? So one day I decided, a couple of days I decided not to wear my mask and I paid for it with coughing and spitting and uh, breathing all that dust. So I continue to wear my mask. They would say, man, I, I didn't know who you were uh, until you took that mask off. So when the pandemic hit, now I'm walking around with masks, everybody walking around with a mask. They said, see Byron, you started this. I said, no, I didn't. I didn't start this. Somebody else started it. <laughs> I'm just, they say, so what are you going to do after uh, everything's open up and the masks go away? I said, I'm going to switch this and get me my regular one that I wear to keep all that dust from getting in me. <laughs> That's real. People don't understand. But to know that your Redeemer lives is an awesome thing to understand the power of God working in an individual from the point in time before they hit the water, he's working to get them to understand we need to take care of this issue with our sin and then we can start work. My lesson today is about change. You see, God's work has never stopped since the beginning of creation. Isn't that amazing? His work has not stopped. We read in Philippians chapter one and verse six, I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. You see, change is about difference, improvement, moving, to make or become different. Are you guys familiar with the story of Rehoboam and Jeroboam? Well, Solomon lived about 60 some years, I would say. And in 2 Corinthians, not 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles uh, chapter nine and verse 31, Solomon then rested with his fathers and he was buried in the city of David. And his son, Rehoboam, reigned in his place. So now Rehoboam decided that uh, he would take some advice from the elders, the old men that served under his father, Solomon. But before that happened, we read about Jeroboam fleeing from the presence of Solomon. And once he got word that Solomon was no longer alive, he comes back to Israel. So Israel had come together to make Rehoboam king. So Jeroboam and all of Israel comes to Rehoboam and says, your father has laid some difficult things on us, heavy for us to bear. You can read about this in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 10. And he says to him, if you would lift these burdens off of us that your father has laid on us, we will serve you. He said, okay, come back to me in three days. So he goes to get advice. He goes to the old man that served under his father, Solomon, and asked him for advice, asked him for advice. So they told him, if you would be good to these people, and please these people by speaking good things to them, they will serve you. 
But he decided that he didn't want that advice. You see, advice, you can, you can, you can receive advice from an elderly person, then you can receive advice from those of your age or even younger. In this case, he went to some guys that he grew up with that were serving him under him now. So he grew up, he knew. So you got these youngsters and they tell him, oh, what do these people say to you? Oh, they uh, asked me to lighten the load. No, 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 no. Tell them we're we going we gonna to make it even harder for you. We're going to add to the load. And you know what? From that advice that he had taken from the guys that were serving him, cost him dearly. So we need to understand the advice that we are taking is going to have a negative effect or a positive effect. So we see from that, can people change? Can people change? Sometimes advice can be life-changing in a northern fashion and sometimes it can be you know the saying everything is going down south it's all bad when it go down south so can people change is my first point we need people to change for the betterment of the human race when joseph was 17 years old right he brought back a bad report to his father concerning his brothers. His father loved him more. Why? Because it was a son of his old age, right? That's what the scripture says, right? So his father loved him more than the other siblings. And his brothers hated him and they could not speak kindly to him. Imagine that. Your brothers don't have nothing good to say to you. And then comes the two dreams that Joseph had. They hated him even more and became jealous. We all remember that, don't we? we if, you, if you're familiar with the Bible, you know. But Judah, Judah pleads for Benjamin was the final test that Joseph gave his brothers. Judah pleads for Benjamin in Genesis chapter 44 and verse 43. What he did was he said, let me, let me whisper something in your ear is what, is what the term means. Now, please let your servant remain here as my Lord's slave in place of the boy. Let him go back with his brothers. This is Joseph's younger brother that Joseph wanted to keep. So God can help people change too. When Judah was younger, he showed no regard for his brother Joseph or his father Jacob. No regard for them. Just as the advice that was given to Rehoboam by his friends that he grew up with, now that was serving him, these young guys. But it's kind of amazing to me because Rehoboam was about 41 years old when he, when he took a, a kingship. So we see that he had no regard. First, he convinced his brothers to sell Joseph as a slave. See, now we're looking at Judah when he was younger, his attitude on life. In Genesis chapter 37 and verse 27, come let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay a hand on him for he is our brother, our own flesh. And they agree. See how he's leading his brothers in the wrong direction when it comes to a life. And then he joined his brothers in lying to his father about Joseph's fate. So we have all of this going on with Judah and the rest of the gang in Genesis chapter 37 and verse 32. They sent the robe of many colors to their father and said, 
We have found this. Examine it. Is it your son's robe or not? We know the story. But now the question becomes, which stage of life is the most important? There are those who would say that infancy is the key in this stage when a baby's brain is wide open to new experiences that will influence all the rest of his life. Okay. Others may argue that it's adolescence, young adulthood, when physical health is at its peak in the case of Ray Baum and his boys. Okay, and then finally, there are many of those around the world that value late adulthood more than other, arguing that it is at this stage that the human being has finally acquired the wisdom necessary to guide others. We see that in the old man or the elders dealing with Rehoboam. Wouldn't want to take his advice. But who is right? We must understand that all stages of life is necessary for the development of the human being. There is none that is greater than the other. So, we see all of the things that has been taking place. We know that God did certain things with Joseph for the preservation of his seed. But we also must understand Satan was a driving force behind all of this also. For we saw how the brothers had hatred in their heart, how they had jealousy, how they lied and used deceit. We see all of this where? We see in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 19, for from the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adultery, sexual immorality, thefts, false testimonies, blasphemy. You can pick one of those and throw it right at that group right there that we just got through talking about. Because one thing about the human nature, it has not changed, it's still the same. God is still working, he is still working. We understand in Galatians chapter uh, five, verses 19 through 21, we're all familiar with these verses. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger. Selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, crowsing, and anything similar. I tell you about these things in advance, as I told you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are here this morning and you are on your quest to see the face of God, then you need to understand that we, this, we need to pay attention to this. You need to pay attention. Hatred, strife, jealousy, envy, deception, lying. These are the motivating uh, items for their conduct. The ones who sold Joseph into slavery. But what a change had taken place in Judah. See, it's not all just always all bad. You know, if you live long enough, you'll get a chance to change. But some people don't get a chance to live long enough to change. You see? So, what a change had taken place in Judah. The man who sold one favorite younger brother into slavery now offered to become a slave himself to save another favorite brother. How about that? Change is taking place in Judah's life. Is change taking place in our life today? Okay, so he was so concerned for his father 
and younger brother that he was willing to die for them. Before, he didn't care nothing about his younger brother or his father. He didn't care. He didn't give no thought. You see, when you are ready to give up hope on yourself or others, remember that God can work a complete change even in the most selfish personality. You see, this life that we are living, this quest that we are on, is an ongoing process for your entire life. We look at Joshua in chapter 11 and verse 18 concerning conquering lands and everything. You know, Joshua waged war with all the kings for a long time. Are you waging war today? Spiritual? Flesh against the spirit? It's a war going on within us. Next point. Change does not really happen quickly. If you think that change is going to happen quickly, you might as well stop now. It's not going to happen quickly. The quest of much of the land of Canaan seems to have happened quickly when you're just sitting down and you're reading about it. You can read about it in one sitting, right? But it actually took a long time. There are some commentators that says it took about seven years. Well, seven years is still a long time. In our everyday life, we're looking at 19, what, 20, 21? Seven years from now. That's, man, that's a long way off. But in our minds, we're thinking, oh, that's nothing. But you got to deal with today and get out of today. Some people don't make it out of today. Understand that. So, we often expect quick changes in our life and quick victories over sin. God has put some things in place for us that when we do fall short in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, about how we can confess all of our sins and he will forgive us for all of our sins. And we understand that in Hebrews 9 and 22, that almost all things are purified by the blood of Christ. And you know that this has been going on for quite some time, but it changed when Christ came. When we look at Genesis chapter three and verse 21, how the Lord covered uh, Adam and Eve with skins of animals, that cost a life. Jesus Christ today, uh, according to St. John chapter 3 and uh, verse 16, we all know that cost the life. So life is at stake here. We understand that. But our journey with God is a lifelong process. And the changes in the victories may take some time. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. It is easy to grow impatient with God and feel like giving up hope because things are moving too slow. Hey, come on, speed it up, Lord. I, I need to hurry up and, and change. It's going to take some time. You're going to have to go through some things, right? So when we are close to a situation, it is difficult to see the progress. When you're going through something, a situation, it's difficult to, to see it. But when we look back, when we look back, we can see that God never stopped working. I never forget when I came down to San Jose back in 1998. They said, Mr. Canada, we're going to give you one more chance. I was looking at 15 to life, state penitentiary. 
said, okay, give me one more chance. When I came down to San Jose back in 1998, I only had a quarter in my pocket and just the clothes on my back. Now I can look back and say, thank you, Lord. I know that my Redeemer lives. I am well acquainted with that, you see. So, never give up hope as in our scripture reading. I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day, the day of Jesus Christ. I am a firm believer in that. I've seen the work of the Lord not only in my life, but in uh, many lives. Next point, in Numbers chapter 10 and verse 13, dealing with the children of Israel, how they set out for the first time according to the Lord's command through Moses. He saved them, he, he, he delivered them with the cloud and the fire across the Red Sea. Now they're safe. All the enemies drown. So we gather here. We gather everything together. We don't want to go this way because they're too weak. They're scared. We don't want to have them wanting to flee back to Egypt. So we're going to go this way. That's how the Lord works. He always knows <clears throat> what's best for us when we don't even realize it ourselves. Come on. Now. God helps us. Next one. God helps us handle change god helps us handle change those who travel move or face new challenges know what it is to be uprooted i know well about that my nephew said to me not too long ago he said man uh y'all be moving every uh two years or so I'm sitting on my bed and I look at him and I start laughing. I say, man, you're right. We have been moving every other year, every two years or whatnot. Man, I done moved so many times since I've been out here in this county. I told my wife the last time my son said, oh, we need a bigger house. Let's move to Morgan Hill. I'm like, I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm not helping y'all do nothing. Y'all on your own. But guess what? I'm the one that ended up doing the majority of the lifting and the pulling and the driving. I said, yeah, thought you weren't going to do nothing. No. Life is full of changes and, and few things remain the same. You see, few things remain the same. Life is full of changes. Not too many things stay stable in your life. The Israelites were constantly moving through the desert, just like I've been constantly moving throughout this county. Just move here, move there, but the Lord finally settled me down. They were unable to handle change only, be, they were able to handle change because God's presence in the tabernacle was always with them moving. They always had the presence of God with them moving, right? So. The portable tabernacle signified God and his people moving together. Now, we must understand this. We must understand this, okay? For us, stability does not mean lack of change, but moving with God in every circumstance. You have to allow God to work with you in situations that's not in your favor. That's not in your favor. And my last thought here, it's going to be coming out of St. John chapter 4, verse 39, dealing with the Samaritan woman. Now, many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of what the woman said when she testified. He told me everything that I ever did. 
when a person can look you in the face and tell you everything that you ever did, what are you going to think? You see, God can change the worst in people. He can change the worst in us. The worst. How many husbands do you have? I know the one you with now ain't your husband, but you have had six or seven. Can you imagine that? You see? So, the Samaritan woman immediately shared her experience with others. Are you sharing your experience with others with what Christ has done in your life? I'm going to tell you, when, when uh, the good Lord uh, revealed his message to me, since that point in time, he's used me to baptize about 300 people. I say, Lord, we, we done slowed down. I have, we haven't uh, brought anyone to Christ in quite some time. So it's not my will, it's your will. I tell my, our Father, it's your will. So when you're ready, I'm ready. Despite her reputation, many took her invitation and came out to meet Jesus. You see, we need to tell people about Jesus. That's it. That's all we need to do. Perhaps there are sins in our past which we are ashamed of. Sure, there are some things in our past we are ashamed of. But Christ changes us. Man, when I go around my people, people today, they know what I used to do. I used to mess people's lives up, selling them drugs. Uh, one of the one of Satan's chief workers, destroying lives. Army of the darkness. Now I'm a son of the light. The change in us. He changed me. I don't. I don't have to do the things that I used to do to make a living. Now I'm at work sweating. Man. But each morning I get up, I say glory to the Lord because I get a chance to go out another day. You see, often those things for which we are most uh, ashamed become the very changed areas that catch other people's attention. We understand that. That's very powerful. When they can see that you were an ex-prostitute, an ex-pimp, an ex-drug dealer, an ex-drunk, thief, robber, bandit, murderer, child molester. When they can see the change in you and see Christ in you, victory. Often those things for which we are most ashamed of, we know, changes people's attention. As people see these changes, they become curious. But this guy changed his life. He went to San Jose with, with a quarter in his pocket. Guy's driving a $100,000 car. He done bought a million-dollar house. What, what is going on with this? Uh, I've been walking with Jesus. I've been getting up working hard every day. That's where it's at. It's about working hard and believing and the one who is working in you. I'll never forget when I worked for $7 an hour and had to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning just to catch a bus to drive to Los Altos. In the rain, cold, didn't matter. I had to do it. But now I can look back and thank Jesus. I can look back and thank Jesus. So in closing, we can use these opportunities to introduce to them, the Messiah, the Christ. I hope you have found this lesson uplifting to you, educating to you. May we always remember that we are sons and daughters of light and let our light shine that other people may see Christ in us. If you stand in need of prayer, we are here to pray for you. You are not a member of the body of Christ. 
water. All right. We can baptize you. And, and uh, according to Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, God can start working. He, if, if you're not a member of the body of Christ, you've been reading scriptures, you've been debating about whether or not you want to become a son of light, today is the day. Message.